Good afternoon. To date, 3,132 residents of Massachusetts have been tested for COVID-19 by the State Public Health Laboratory and commercial labs. Of these, 328 have tested positive. And sadly, we have reported Massachusetts' first COVID-19 death. Yesterday evening, a man in his 80s from Suffolk County, he had been hospitalized, had pre-existing health conditions that put him at the highest risk. Governor. Thanks, Secretary Sutters. Obviously, it's heartbreaking to say, but this is certainly a day that I think we all knew would come. We read and hear about the accounts from elsewhere in the world or across this country about the loss of life that this disease is responsible for. But when it happens here in the Commonwealth, it's obviously different. I know that these are uncertain and unsettling times for everyone, and I know that we are asking a great deal of the people of Massachusetts. But in this job for the past five years, I've had the opportunity to travel this great state, to spend time in communities large and small, and to meet people from every walk of life. And they've told me their stories and shared their dreams and their fears. Those stories and the many experiences that we've had in, their, in our communities are a source of great confidence and comfort in this particular moment because we all appreciate the remarkable strength and character of the people of Massachusetts. At the same time, the restrictions we've put in place will only work if everyone embraces them and especially embraces the notion of social distancing and does everything in their power to prevent the spread of this dangerous virus. We need to remember that we're all in this together and that we ask everyone to take responsibility to do their part to stop the spread of this horribly contagious virus. If they do, if we do, then we can and will get through it. Now, with respect to a few updates, it's no secret that Massachusetts is home to many incredible life sciences companies that are dedicated to developing solutions to healthcare issues across the world. And they've brought that same dedication to the table as they've thought about how to respond to COVID-19. And I'm not talking here about particular companies in Massachusetts that are either working on vaccines, diagnostic tools, testing, or treatment proposals and options. What I'm talking about is a partnership that MassBio put together with MassMedic, the Massachusetts Health and Hospital Association, and the Conference of Boston Teaching Hospitals, which they launched with the Massachusetts Life Science Center to create an emergency supply hub to help coordinate efforts to try to bring additional supplies and resources to our state's healthcare institutions. This includes lab testing and diagnostic supplies personal protective equipment, and medical ex expertise. There's already been, in one day, a very robust response for many folks who are willing to step up, donate, and help. Bob Coughlin from MassBio will speak in more detail on this initiative in a minute. MassBio is sharing the information that they get from companies with DPH and with the command center to triage and connect suppliers with those healthcare providers that need them. I encourage all life science companies to visit massbio.org to see how you can help. And I want to thank all of the organizations that have already responded to this request. With respect to testing, the Commonwealth continues to make progress on implementing additional ways to test people for COVID-19. On Thursday, CVS and Shrewsbury opened the state's first large-scale drive-through COVID-19 testing site which is a partnership between our administration, the federal government, local health authorities, and CVS. This specific site will be for emergency personnel and first responders, and will expanding text testing access to frontline workers. Currently, this site is one of over 40 sites that are launching throughout the country over the next week with test kits supplied by the federal government. The specimens will be processed at Quest Diagnostics in Marlboro, which Lieutenant Governor Secretary Sutters and I toured yesterday to see the testing facilities they plan to use as they wrap, ramp up their COVID-19 testing capacity as well. We'll continue to work across all levels to expand capacity here in the Commonwealth. 
Yesterday, we activated the Massachusetts National Guard to support our administration's efforts to keep people safe and healthy during the COVID-19 outbreak. The order authorizes the activation of up to 2,000 National Guard members in the Commonwealth, and these Guard members will be tasked with a variety of initiatives, mostly around supporting state agencies and local governments with equipment, logistics, warehousing, staff support, and other duties. I'd also like to dispel, once again, recent rumors about a shelter-in-place order. Massachusetts is not planning any forced shelter-in-place order. Everyone needs to get their news from legitimate sources. Please check mass.gov slash COVID-19 for updates. Our state and local health officials are monitoring this issue around the clock and will work as hard as they possibly can to provide new resources and support to residents, providers, first responders, and others who are on the front lines of this cause. Finally, I have a message for tenants and homeowners who are dealing with financial hardship due to the virus. We know you are worried and we are going to do everything we can to ensure that nobody loses their housing because of this crisis. We'll have more to say on this in the coming days, but for now, I want renters to know the current standing orders in the Massachusetts trial court means there will be no pending eviction cases that can proceed until at least April 21st. And for homeowners who are worried about making a mortgage payment, our state laws provide 90 days to cure any payment default on a mortgage. To be clear, this administration will be taking action in the coming days to ensure that homeowners and renters are protected. This obviously remains an incredibly challenging and difficult couple of weeks for us all. And while we're still at the beginning stages of this battle and we have much more to do, by working together, we're doing the right things to slow down the spread of the virus and to enhance our ability to care for the people who do get ill from it. I do want to thank all the frontline workers, first responders, state and local government employees, and everyone else who's doing all they can to step up during this crisis. And I also want to thank everybody at home for your patience and perseverance during these unprecedented times. We've taken a number of unprecedented steps to keep everybody safe, and we urge you to continue to comply with those to the fullest extent possible. I also want to ask everyone to remember the most vulnerable among us and that you reach out, hopefully by phone or some other technology, to help one another. Call your neighbors, your friends, your family members. A friendly check can go a long way. I now want to welcome Bob Coughlin, the President and CEO of MassBio, to the podium. Thank you very much, Governor. Um, Massachusetts is home to the highest concentration density of biotech companies, pharmaceutical companies, medical device companies, and diagnostic companies. We're currently asking every, all of those life sciences companies in the state to donate lab testing and diagnostic supplies, general protect, protection equipment known as PPE, and medical and scientific expertise that is needed by folks on the front lines to combat COVID-19. To do this, you simply need to visit massbio.org and you can fill out a survey there that will download that information and those inventory into what we are calling the supply hub. The response so far has been amazing and we can't thank all of the companies enough. In just the first 24 hours, nearly 200 companies have responded with supplies that they have that they were willing to donate to fight this fight. Uh, but we need more. We need folks to visit massbio.org and fill out this survey. Uh, and you'd be surprised, it's not just biopharma and medical device companies and diagnostic companies that are offering to donate, but also dentist's office, colleges, universities. If you have these supplies that we need on the front lines, please fill out the survey and we'll get them into the database. To be clear, the supply hub is not collecting or distributing these supplies. This effort is to supplement the existing excellent work being done by our state government. This Im information will be provided to the command center and they will be responsible for distributing the, the supplies based on need. I want to thank everyone who's involved in this effort 
including our partners Steve Walsh at the Mass Health and Hospital Association, Brian Johnson from Mass Medic, and Tish McMullen at the Conference of Boston Teaching Hospitals. Uh, we are working on this together, side by side, so that in short order we can give the real heroes of all of this, the folks who are on the front line fighting this fight and keeping us safe, it's so important that we give the equipment, materials, and PPE that we have to them now so that they can do the amazing work that they're doing in protecting all of us. Thank you. And now to the Lieutenant Governor. Thank you, uh, Bob and uh, Mass Bio and the member employers uh, for your leadership. Uh, while for many, many years we've been so proud of our status relative to the life science industry, clearly uh, this is a proud moment as the industry truly steps up for the health and well being of the people of this Commonwealth. Uh, thank you. Uh, I also uh, want to acknowledge uh, the family uh, who lost a loved one, uh, an older uh, gentleman. Uh, residing in our Commonwealth succumbed to COVID-19. And it underscores uh, through their situation that older adults and people with underlying medical conditions are vulnerable and it's incumbent on all of us uh, to do what we can uh, every day uh, to support them and others who've been diagnosed and are sick uh, with COVID-19. I'd also just like to thank all of you at home uh, these are, uh, as the governor said, unsettling and uncertain times. We all uh, acknowledge that. But I'd like to just underscore for you at home, you play a role in helping us uh, fight back and overcome uh, the challenges that we are experiencing. As a mother of two teenagers, uh, I know how challenging it is to see them uh, not participate in the routine that they they loved, uh, maybe not so much going to school every day, but now they value their learning maybe more than ever uh, and not having the activities around their day-to-day -day life. And for students to be able to access learning and reading and being supportive at home as families and individuals across this Commonwealth figure out uh, the new uh, daily routine and lifestyle that we all know is, is part of, of our existence. I'd also just like everyone uh, to acknowledge the frontline uh, hospital uh, personnel, uh, the police and fire, emergency responders, child care uh, workers who will be staffing these emergency child care facilities. Uh, thank them and their families for their sacrifice, uh, choosing to go forward, protect us, serve us, and keep us safe uh, throughout the upcoming uh, weeks and time it will take. Uh, to combat this epidemic. I have a few announcements I'd like to share with you. Uh, the first is regarding uh, the small businesses. Earlier in the week, uh, we announced a small business emergency fund uh, dedicating $10 million uh, to help small businesses at this early stage uh, to bridge gaps and address uh, shortfalls with regard to cash uh, and other needs that they have. Uh, clearly, you can uh, understand that many uh, small businesses uh, submitted applications uh, to this fund. Uh, and today, we are announcing another $10 million uh, to add to that effort. Uh, Mass Development will be holding a board meeting early in the week uh, to vote and approve uh, these funds for that purpose. Uh, we also want to thank uh, the federal government uh, relative to the small business. Uh, association's efforts uh, to supplement and complement uh, the need to supply uh, our so small businesses with the assistance they need. Uh, relative to Mass Growth Capital Corps that will be managing this $20 million fund, these emergency loans are up to $75,000 and will assist uh, businesses under 50 full and part-time employee levels. I'd also like to make an announcement uh, uh, regarding the Department of Revenue. Earlier in the week, uh, we made announcements uh, relative to meals, tax, and room occupancy, excise uh, obligations, and we, uh, in addition to deferring those uh, payments uh, for small businesses, particularly uh, those in, in that industry, uh, we are adding that the department will waive any late file or late pay penalties for returns and payments due during the period March 20th through March May 31st 
for taxpayers with meals tax and room occupancy excise obligations. This relief clearly will help assist uh, businesses such as restaurants and is not limited based on the size of the business for the waiver of these penalties. Relative to the registry of motor vehicles, last week we issued an order allowing the registry to extend licenses, permits, and identifications, and to suspend road and knowledge tests. Today, we're taking additional steps so people will not have to go to the registry of motor vehicle service centers in person. This order allows the registrar to extend vehicle registrations and modify the conditions of registrations, plates and titles, and it also allows the registrar and the commissioner of the Department of Environmental Protection uh, the authority to waive certain inspection requirements. In closing, uh, we can't state enough the importance of understanding uh, what social distancing is and more so practicing it and also as part of your uh, personal contribution to helping us combat uh, this epidemic uh, to incorporate a daily washing, sanitizing, and the hygiene needed uh, to keep yourself, your household, your workplace, your family, and those close to you safe. I'd now like to turn it over to Secretary Sutters. Thank you, Lieutenant Governor. So um, I'd like to provide a few updates from the command center. We are focused on conserving existing resources, particularly personal protective equipment, chasing down every supply chain opportunity. And as you heard, a supply chain opportunity came our way and we're deeply grateful to Bob and the biotech community. Increasing testing capacity and planning our health care system in response to COVID-19. Today, I'm announcing that we're infusing $200 million across Mass Health and Safety Net health care providers. They are accelerated payments from FY20 and FY21, or our, or our cash advances. I'm clear this is not a permanent solution, but a stopgap measure to keep our frontline health care system, particularly our safety net providers, able to provide the necessary care. To further protect and conserve health care resources, please, to all of us, call your doctor instead of going in if you're not feeling well and utilize the telehealth resources that we've been pushing out. The importance of these efforts is several. To keep people who are not feeling well from going to doctor's offices and emergency rooms and potentially infecting others, and to preserve our critical health care providers and their resources, such as PPE. Again, I urge everyone who's not feeling well to stay home. And if you feel like you need to connect with your health care provider, call your doctor's office or use the telehealth resources available. Later tonight, we have, a, we have a, our own definition of what close of business is not perhaps regular people's close of business. So tonight, we will be filing a waiver request to the federal government seeking emergency flexibilities to respond to the, per the current public health crisis. If allowed, Massachusetts will be able to fast track mass health enrollment, streamline administrative requirements for providers, and deliver critically needed health care services easier during the COVID-19 outbreak. Through this waiver and other federal authorities, we seek on a statewide basis, we will allow for non-traditional sites of care to expand surge capacity, such as the use of testing tents and overflow hospital sites if we need them. It will allow new providers, including out-of-state providers, a streamlined pathway to practice in the state, including caring for Mass Health members. It will allow physician assistants to practice independently and will provide flexibility to hospitals and skilled nursing facilities to meet increasing demand. In Mass Health specific flexibilities, we will expand the Mass Health hospital determined presumptive eligibility to all individuals, which Mass Health already expanded through a public health order last week, including children, older adults, and individuals who have received Mass Health benefits within the past 12 months. We will allow medications to be delivered to members 
and waive a signature requirement for these prescriptions. And we will waive face-to-face -face requirements for certain community-based services, including home and community-based services and behavioral health evaluations for Schedule 2 to 4 prescriptions. In addition, effective immediately, Mass Health and the Massachusetts Health Connector are suspending all redeterminations. Additionally, Mass Health and the Health Connector will protect coverage for all individuals who have Medicaid coverage as of March 18, 2020, and for all individuals approved for coverage during this national epidemic. This protection will extend to one month after the national outbreak is declared over. Members will not lose coverage or have a decrease in benefits for any other reason. For individuals who have received notices that their coverage was ending after March 18th, no change in coverage will occur. These individuals do not have to send in any paperwork to keep their coverage. It is protected. This ensures that all Mass Health members have access to testing and treatment they may need relative to COVID-19. The federal stimulus package allows for this protection of coverage and also provides for an increase in the federal share of Medicaid funding by 6.2% for each quarter while the national emergency is in place. And I know you've heard this from us before, but, it's remem it, but please remember, it's important to take care of yourself. There is so much going on right now, and I just want to take that moment to urge you to take care of yourself. Continue to practice personal hygiene, maintain social distancing, and focus on your own mental health. I encourage you to contact 211 for the most up-to-date information and resources to help keep you and your loved ones safe. Thank you. Commissioner Burrell. Thank you. Good afternoon. I'm deeply saddened to learn of this first death we've had here in the Commonwealth, and my sympathy goes out to this gentleman's family and friends. This death is an unfortunate reminder of the critically important role each one of us plays in reducing the spread of this virus and in protecting those who are most vulnerable to serious illness and death, including older adults and those with underlying conditions. As we see the daily numbers of cases rising, you will be learning that people you know have tested positive. Friends, neighbors, coworkers, and members of our own family. People have been asking me for advice. What should I do if I develop symptoms? Who should I call? How can I be helpful in addressing this pandemic? I'll tell you what I tell them. Protect yourself and protect others. Follow the guidance on hand hygiene and personal hygiene. Cover your cough and sneeze appropriately and stay home if you're sick. Keep a safe physical distance from others through social distancing. By following these procedures, we will help to decrease the spread of this virus. Decreasing the spread will decrease the chances of someone who is high risk getting sick. It will also help us preserve our healthcare system and make sure that we have capacity to care for individuals who will need to be cared for in our hospitals. If you have a cold or feel mildly ill, at this time, we advise you to stay home. If you are concerned about your health, call your healthcare provider first and avail yourself of the telehealth and other resources that we've been speaking about. Fortunately, the vast majority of people who become infected with COVID-19 will get better on their own. The goal of this advice is to preserve our healthcare capacity and make sure that our emergency rooms have space to focus on our sickest patients who will need hospitalization. That's part of the reason we are emphasizing social distancing now. Social distancing, again, staying six feet from one another, minimizing contact with other people, avoiding large gatherings, will help slow the spread of this infection. This is a new disease, and the data and science are evolving. We will keep you informed as we gain more information. We all have a role to play in reducing the spread of this virus in our communities. 
thank you to everything that you are doing today and for everything that I know you will do as we continue our fight to end this epidemic. The most important the most important part of a public health response is you, the public. I know you are counting on us, and we are counting on you as well. We will get through this together.